The world needs robots. The technology of building general humanoid robots, which is going to be the most useful, of course, because we build the world around ourselves, that technology is incredibly hard to do. But for the very first time with transformers and these large language models and the breakthroughs that we're seeing with foundation models, we finally have the technology necessary, we think, to be able to uh, make a real contribution in this area. Jensen, you've led NVIDIA through gaming and so many AI breakthroughs. Which emerging technology do you see or, or think will be the most impactful for us? over the next decade. When you take a step back and ask yourself what would happen if we could scale intelligence, building robotics, the things that we're working on, Hi, Jensen. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. I'm happy to be here. You made some groundbreaking announcements at CES, and in particular, one area I'm very curious about is robotics. Mm -hmm. What excites you the most about the possibilities when it comes to robotics now with tools such as Cosmos or World Foundational Models? Mm -hmm. We're in an incredible time with robotics. The critical technologies necessary to build general humanoid robotics is just around the corner. And one of the critical pieces of technology uh, is uh, an AI model that understands the world. Just as we have an AI model that understands language now with ChatGPT and Llama and such, um, we, need a, we need a world model, a language model of the world. The world needs robots. And one of the reasons for that is, is uh, we just don't have enough workers. You know, there's a there's a uh, aging population and and uh, a changing in preference of the type of work that people want to do and and the birth rate is declining and the world needs more workers and so the timing is really uh, relatively imperative that that we have robotic systems the technology of building general humanoid robots uh, which is going to be the most useful of course because we build the world around ourselves um, that technology is incredibly hard hard to do, to do. Um, but for the very first time uh, with transformers and these large language models and the breakthroughs that that we're seeing with foundation models we finally have the technology necessary we think uh, to be able to uh, make a real contribution in this area there are several things that we have to bring together for, first the robot has to understand us um, and and the breakthroughs in ChatGPT, for example uh, has really made that made that possible but uh, what's missing is that we now need a ai that understands the physical world. It has to understand the dynamics of the physical world, like gravity, inertia, and friction, and it has to understand spatial relationships and geometric relationships, and you know, and common common sense things like per, you know, object permanence and things like that. And so we went off to create essentially uh, the ChatGPT or the Llama of uh, world models, and it's called World Foundation Model, just like a just like a um, language foundation model, this is a, a foundation model that understands worlds. And so, so if we could create such a thing, and that's what Cosmos is, and we we uh, made it available openly for everyone. Uh, hopefully, this will uh, really ignite the um, and accelerate the development of robot robotics. I love that. And when it comes to to teaching robotics, mm -hmm. I know there were some now announcements made around Isaac Root as well, especially around virtual reality training. Where do you see the future of that or the possibilities of that opening up for it? Well, the first part of training an AI is you, you have to give them foundation knowledge, yeah. okay, common sense knowledge. The second part is you have to fine tune them in skills. You have to teach them things. And the way you teach a general robotics is kind of like the way you teach a person, you show it to them. And so you use human demonstration and you show them this is the way you pick up a glass. But every time the glass is a little bit different, it's positioned a little different, the height's a little different, and the shape's a little different. And yet uh, it's basically picking up a glass of water. And so using Groot, using Isaac Groot, we could use, we could do a few human demonstrations and then using AI, using Cosmos and uh, Omniverse to generate a whole bunch of future versions of it. And so so then we generate all a whole bunch of versions of different sizes and different locations and placements. And uh, uh, we give all of that training data, like invitation data, to the robot to learn from. And so now it learned a whole bunch of generalized versions of it. Yes. Yeah. Because there's, it feels like there's endless amounts of, of versions and, and that's what really what this is solving is by giving those versions to for training the robot. That's right. So instead of giving it just one example, we're giving that robot millions of different examples. Exactly. Yeah. And 
You were mentioning Omniverse as well, and that's something that I'm very, very fascinated with, especially when it comes to virtual training in industries such as manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Where, how do you see those industries evolving with uh, using the Omniverse for for training purposes? Well, the robotics industry has a hard time getting off the ground because it's hard to train a robot. And you have to create a whole bunch of experiences for the robot. And it's also hard, it's also dangerous to train a robot in the physical world. And so we created a virtual world where a robot could, you know, a playground for a robot essentially. And so this Omniverse is a virtual playground. It, to the robot, it feels like the real thing because it obeys, it obeys the laws of physics and, and um, uh, things look real and to the robot, it can't tell the difference. And so, so we train the robot in this virtual world called Omniverse, and we create a, you know, a whole bunch of scenarios for the robot to learn from. Now, when the robot learned how to be in Omniverse and do, job, do a task in Omniverse, we take that robot brain and we put it into the real robot. And, you know, if the sim, the real gap is as small as possible, the robot can't tell the difference. Tell the difference. Yeah, that's, in, that's the incredible part. And so this virtual world, this digital twin of the world is what Omniverse was created for. It's amazing. And, and it saves so many, I'm sure, resources and time if, if the training was done otherwise. But... Yeah, otherwise it's just be impossible. If you were to train a robot, say, to, to uh, learn how to walk in the physical world, it would be learning in human time, linear time. Yeah. But in Omniverse, we could create so many different multiverses, if you will, that the robot is learning in parallel, you know, maybe a hundred thousand different ways. And so we take what would have taken 10 years to train a robot to do, we basically reduced it down to a few hours. And so, you know, this is the, this is the, imagine if we had a multiverse, how smart we would be, you know? So all the different versions of Tiffany would be learning the, learning math here, learning science there, learning English there, learning right, geography there, and we simultaneously learn it all at the same time. And that's essentially what Omniverse does. Exactly, exactly. I, I wish that was possible for Dang. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, another area that uh, was announced yesterday was around NVIDIA Drive AI and really um, enhancing and helping the safety and security when it comes to autonomous vehicles. You know, I know you also announced your partnership with Toyota as well, which is very exciting. Yeah, that was big news. You know, really big they're the largest car, largest car company in the world. I know, it's very exciting. Where do you see that headed with uh, NVIDIA Drive AI? Mm -hmm. Well, we've been working on autonomous driving for some time mm -hmm. and and uh, it's already a some $5 billion business for us. Yeah, and so the way that we the way that we serve the autonomous vehicle industry is through the three computer system: one for training the AI, one for simulating the AI called Omniverse, and one to put the AI in the car. And the car the car AI uh, safety is everything. And uh, the way that you uh, solve for safety uh, first, the algorithm has to be safe, and so it has to be smart about what to avoid and what you know uh, how to drive safely and such but those are algorithm things beyond even underneath that the operating system has to be designed to be safe the car computer has to design to be safe uh, in in the sense that that uh, it can't fail and if it were to fail it would fail safely there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, very complex uh, technology that's associated with diversity of algorithms and redundancy of computing and all of this uh, complex technology makes it possible to be safe exactly and, yeah it's so interesting you say that because it is you know from from a consumer standpoint you think of uh you think of safety more so from you know detecting objects or whatnot but to your point it cut there's so many layers to it it goes down all the way down to the algorithm really uh, is where it begins. That's right. And and the more diversity you have and the more redundancy that you have, the more safe the system will be. Exactly. Jensen, you've led NVIDIA through gaming and so many AI breakthroughs. Yeah. Which emerging technology do you see or, or think will be the most impactful for us over the next decade? Well, artificial intelligence is unquestionably the single most important technology of our time. And and uh, when you take a step back and ask yourself what would happen if we could scale intelligence and apply it and channel that capability and direct it at uh, healthcare for drug discovery or um, figuring out how to deal with climate climate uh, climate change or um, just you know uh, uh, building robotics uh, for example the things that the things that we're working on 
so that we could uh, deal with the aging population, declining population, and prevent uh, and help alleviate the uh, uh, inflation that's going on everywhere by driving productivity into every single industry. Um, there's just so many things that that um, uh, artificial intelligence is going to impact, and and so that's why, we're, as a company, we're all completely into it. Yes. Now, artificial intelligence affects all of our other businesses. You yeah. know, from uh, it, even though GeForce was really the the uh, the vehicle that that made artificial intelligence um, possible, uh, AI has now gone back to GeForce and made computer graphics more amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just it's just incredible what we're able to do now combining artificial intelligence and computer graphics and and so we're we're using artificial intelligence to we're combining it with uh, physical sciences and revolutionizing the way we do uh, scientific computing uh, we're combining it with uh, you know the way that we design chips to so we design better chips and the way we uh, develop better software and so artificial intelligence is affecting everything that we do yeah. um, and uh, it's going to impact everything that uh, every industry out there. So it's it's the single most important thing undoubtedly. And that brings me to, to a question. I have a lot of uh, followers or viewers on my channel who are either, you know, uh, in computer science or, you know, working in technology. And, and a common question asked is, there's so many areas within tech that you can get into or kind of grow your career into. Um, you know, it, it seems like artificial intelligence from both the business and technical standpoint is definitely a great area for, for them to continue to, to pursue. Yeah, I think the, the, the of course, there's, there's contributing to the basic science of artificial intelligence. And, and, um, and I, th I think that that's terrific. However, the, the next decade, the application of artificial intelligence, the applied sciences is going to be really important. Yes. You know, how does, how, uh, I work with ChatGPT as a companion every day, you know, yeah, and so, so I have ChatGPT on all the time and I'm asking you questions and, and working with it to solve problems. You have to, you have to learn how to interact with AI and prompting, as you know, um, has a, has a real art to it and, um, and uh, there's art and science uh, associated with prompting. And so the way you interact with people, the way you interact with AIs, you're going to have to learn how to do that. And how do you apply AI to um, uh, content creation? How do you apply AI uh, to engineering? Or how do you apply AI to software development? Or how do you apply AI to marketing or finance or um, the legal profession? Whatever, whatever field that you're interested in, yeah. how do you apply AI to that? That's an area that I think is worthy of a lot of research and a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of development. And so, I think the the uh, whereas my generation was really about how do we apply computers yeah. to solve chip design and software engineering. This generation is how do we apply AI to solve this, those uh, answer all of those same basic questions. How do I apply AI to forestry? How do I apply AI to oceanography? How do I you know, so on and so forth. It's, yeah. yeah, every industry, every field of science. Jensen, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. It's, it's, I'm leaving this conversation feeling so excited about the future and, and what's to come.